today's live. The title of today's live is why rank and rent isn't working for you and why you should quit. Okay. Now, the downside to seven up is it really gives you a lot of freaking bubbles. So I apologize if I'm having to pause, but it is very worth it. Um, guys, some of you guys might have thought that was clickbait. Some of you guys might have thought that I was joking. I, I, I'm so tired of trying to bait. Like you guys all think about this, right? Every single one of you, I know for a fact, because I remember I have never since I started this group in 2021. To this day, I have not invited one person to this group, period. I have not clicked on invite to group. You guys know how you get those freaking annoying ass invitations. And I just got one today. Join this group. It's sales mastery of this and that. It's like, dude, I'm not joining those groups. Don't ask me to join them. And I would never ask you to join my group because then you're just there because you felt obligated. You're not interested. Every single one of you is here because you got referred by a friend. You heard about it somewhere. You saw a YouTube video and decided you wanted more. Every one of you is here because of one reason. That's because you want more. You want to escape the rat race. You guys want to make passive income or semi-passive income, right? And I am so exhausted, exhausted trying to convince people who are telling me with their actions because they joined this group that they want more, that they want different, that they want you know semi-passive income, that they want to travel, that they want to buy their dad a Rolex, that they want to retire their parents, that they want to stop eating syrup sandwiches. All these people that are in the hood say this all the time, sick of syrup sandwiches, okay? Whatever it is, you told me by your actions and being here that that's what you want. And I'm tired of begging people uh, to do it, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the opposite approach, okay? Um, we, guys, today we're going to be bringing on a, a special guest. We're going to be bringing on somebody who has every excuse in the world for this not to work, okay? Somebody who has legitimate, if they so chose, if they wanted to, has legitimate reasons that they could say, yeah, I don't have time, okay? Not some of the BS reasons that you guys give, but some legitimate reasons. And we're going to get into that. You guys are going to hear it. You guys are going to see it. You, you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? Somebody who has been knocked flat on their ass many times, okay, by life, but just continues to get back up. So, and guys, for those of you that don't have money coming in because you have this excuse or for that excuse, today is going to be a real zinger for you because there's not going to be many excuses for you after today. And that's my whole goal. I love bringing people on because guys, number one, yes, it gives social proof. It shows you that it's not just me that makes money. It's not just Porter. It's other people. It's people from other countries. It's people that don't speak English as their first language. It's women. It's men. It's this nationality. It's that nationality. It's every type of person. So that's number one. Number two is I want to show you guys. I want you guys to get inspired that like, yeah, your crap sucks. Everyone's got stuff that they're going through, but ev like yours is probably not as there's somebody out there that's got it worse. Okay. So Guys, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to start off with this, okay? And only bring, bring, I'm going to be bringing on our guest here in about five minutes, okay? So guest, if you can hear me, five more minutes, hang with me, and we're going to be bringing you on, okay? I want to know right now, anyone that's brave enough, anyone that's bold enough, anyone that's got some freaking cojones, I want to know for those of you that it's not working for, if you're not making money with Rank and Rent right now, okay? I, I invite you in the comment section to tell me why, okay? Tell me why it's not working. Give me your excuse. Give me your reason. I'm dead ass serious. I want to know what it is. And I really hope that my eyes are open and, and I can see some. I, I go in the comments right now and I want to know why is it not working? Because uh, based on how many people, I know that all 26 that are live right now, it's fluctuating between 26 and 31. I know you guys aren't all making money. So for those that aren't, why is it not working? I want to know. I actually do. And I will sit here and I will make it awkwardly silent until somebody feels so awkward they have to jump off the live even though it's not in person. Why is it not working for you, guy? Why is it not working for you, gal? Okay? I want to know what your reasons are because I listed 12 uh, uh, bullshit excuses that I bet you I'm going to cover almost everyone's. But I do want to know. Does anyone, or if 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 not, is all 29 of you guys making money, which I think is not even close to true, but I'm curious. Is it, what's the reason? 
Let's hear it. It's pretty quiet. Dylan's ready Guarantee to it. Most, most of the answers have got to be laziness. Like deep down, you know, you just, you should be doing it, but you're lazy. Guys, I, like, let me say this. As some of you guys freaking grow some sack and, and put something. <laughs> Corey McNeil's from Para One. He's going to appreciate this. A lot of people are going to. Um, dude, guys, like, it should inspire you. It sh Actually, it shouldn't inspire you. It should actually piss you off. Okay, should piss you off that Porter and myself and my little and my other brother Zach are making money from this. Okay. Uh dude, like average in every way. Average like Porter, how many books have you read in your life, dude? Like three? Yeah, actually, like literally. I I really don't read. Porter's read like three, and I think two of them were audible, and one of them was like freaking uh, uh uh what's that iron will or some shit like that dude like like whatever that book is with the, the giving tree right that, that mom read to you okay that's what you're like that should piss you off that we're making the money that we're making and we're just average people man okay let's look at some excuses here oh okay Andy says, I need to hear this. I haven't prioritized this. Okay, Andy hasn't prioritized this. So something is more important than making money. And, and you may be one of those unique individuals. Actually, it's more common than you think. That's comfortable, okay? The scariest place to be is the comfortable. The scariest place to be is the seven to 10 to 15 grand. Because when you hang out with some of your friends, you think you're crushing it. But in reality, you're not doing shit, right? That's the scary part because to do something different, you got to have to go back a little bit. You're going to have to take some risk. You're going to have to spend some money, right? Like when I was doing door-to-door -door sales, ripped $210,000 uh, in 2015 was my top line I'm mean, with overhead. I probably was like 190 net, okay? Dude, it scared the hell out of me when I got my check. I got a six-figure check on October 15th that scared the piss out of me because I thought, man, next year, if I want to make 200 grand, I'm going to have to knock all those doors. I'm going to have to go back in the heat. I'm going to have to move back to Arkansas or Alabama. I'm going to have to say, you know, bye to my kids and my wife that many days in a row, and the job sucks. And it scared the hell out of me, but I was comfortable, man. Like we had vacations. We had bought two different properties. We drove nice cars, you know, the whole deal, right? But I, and I was willing and I knew I had to take a step back. And guess what? The next year I did it one last year. I think I did like 160 and I went from 160 in 2016, 2017. You got, Porter, you know how much money I made in 2017? Gross. Uh, 100K. No, 22 grand. 22 and grand in 2017. The, yes. You want to know the crazy part about that 22 grand? I made that 22 grand between... September, October, November, and December. Okay. The last couple, last yeah, four yeah, months. Yeah. It was insane, dude. I went from making, you know, great money. I thought it was great money at the time. I'm mid twenties, right. Thinking it's killing. And this is when money like 10 grand a month was actually something right. Comparable to probably 15, 20 at this point per month. And I made that money in the last three months because I was like, I picked my head out of my ass and stopped freaking doing my software startup that I got distracted by, got back to doing this. And I actually had to do SEO, but I saved at least something, but I had to take that giant step back in 2017 from 160 to 10 and 15, 160 in uh, 16 to $22,000. If that in 2017. Okay. So that's the problem. So anyway, I appreciate you admitting that. But those of you that are comfortable, those of you that have the little cush job and you're making 15 grand, dude, hitting that cruise and you don't even have to do the inner chamber. You guys get to afford the balcony and you might even be able to do the drink pass, dude. The extra 300 bucks, get to carry around your little mug. Dog, <laughs> you got to get around some different people if you think that you're killing it. I've been there, man. I've been there. It's a scary place to be. What else we got? What else we freaking got, dude, as far as excuses? Uh, no reason to make money. Like Porter said, just laziness. Chris Bain owning it. Chris Bain owning it. Stetson Woods is brand new to this and still learn about it. Stetson Wood. Let's go, dude. Let's freaking go. Good to have you. Brand new. Um, let's jump in. Stetson, if you don't know this already, we have a free training. Rent simple sites.com. Porter, can you go ahead and, and reply to his um yeah. comment and put rent simple sites.com free training this will give you a high level of the way that i teach it the way that i do it which is running paid ads to a landing page getting the deal then building out the asset stetson wood welcome to the group 
Uh, Curtis, 16 hour work days, working my job, own my business. But right now, only one actually out there trading my time. You know, yeah, Chris, Curtis, great point, dude. And, and I, this is perfect segue into bringing on our guest. Time is a big one. It's a real one. I totally get it. And I'll tell you this. When I started, and I'm not trying to one up because I, I don't know what kind of business, I don't know what your job is, and I do understand like you're exhausted, okay? When you get home from doing this kind of stuff. When I started my uh, di my digital real estate business, 2016, during my freaking door-to-door -door sales job, okay? There's jobs and then there's commission jobs. And commission jobs, you can't be mentally lazy because if you are, you don't make money, right? You don't get the deal. You, you do the whole sale. You do the whole presentation at the table. You're high energy. And then you freaking screw up the clothes. Guess what? Instead of making $500 that day or $750 that day, you made zero. You go home with a goose egg. You spent money on lunch. You spent money on gas. You didn't see your wife and kids. You just worked for free, okay? You got to be sharp all day, sharp. You have to piss at the wrong time during the presentation. It's going to screw up the deal. You're allergic to cats. You got the cat crawling on your leg. Could screw up the deal. You knock on a stripper's door in Vegas and she's wearing see-through 90s. Your boy closes it down, dude. True story. Okay. Talk about that later. Real story. Porter, I'll tell you about it tonight in the hot tub. Chris Curtis, when I started in 2016, I was doing door-to-door -door sales uh, every single day. I'm not going to go into my whole freaking schedule, but from the time I got up, 8 a.m., did my sales training every single day, went to the gym. Dude, I had it do, 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 do. I got done every single night around 9, 9.30. I would eat, usually Chipotle, shower. My wife at this point, midsummer, was back in Utah getting ready to have our third child, second child. And I had about from 10.30 until I couldn't even keep my eyes open to work on this business. I would lay on my stomach, on my, you know, old little MacBook Air that was slow. You know, I got the base model with no with with no storage and all that good stuff. So it was really slow. And I was watching videos. I had bought a program. I bought a course. I was watching videos and I was, man, trying to pick a niche and I was doing lists and all this different stuff. And I didn't know you could run ads and do this quicker. And I was doing this the slow way. So I get it. I know the time thing is, is a real thing. But at the same time, I would also argue and I'd say this. And I always use this example, but dude, if I came to you, Chris, and I'm just using it as an example, so don't feel like I'm coming at you, but I'm coming at you, Chris, okay? If I came to you and I said, I can see in your profile picture, you have a, 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 a little, it's a really small picture. You look like you have a beautiful little family, nice wife. If I went, and this is going to be a little bit gruesome, okay? But I went, stuck a gun to her head and said, you have one month to get $1,000 a month coming in or I'm pulling the trigger, okay? One month. Uh, I don't care what business, what 16 hour days, I promise you, you would have a deal presented to me probably within a week. Okay. If that was an actual real situation, because you'd get rid of all the bullshit, you'd get rid of all the, the wasted time, you'd get rid of this, that your thoughts and energy would go to one thing and you'd figure out how to do it because you had to. And so the question is, and I always think about this mentally, if you had to, you could do it. So why aren't you doing it now? That's the reality. But the problem is you're not going to see that result right now. You're going to see the negative consequence of the trigger getting pulled. But what's worse is you're going to wake up in 10 years and be in the same exact spot and go, holy shit. I can't get that back, man. And you're going to realize how invaluable time is. So Chris, I get it. Time and anyone else that has got the time reason, uh, not an excuse. I get it. And some of you guys have, could probably argue with me, but dude, I did door to door sales. Not only did I not have time, but I was, I was exerting every mental, uh, capacity that I had towards getting money to pay for my bills and my family and the baby on the way and everything else. And I was building my business. So I do relate to that. I do understand. Let's bring on our freaking guest for Should we do that? Let's do it. Okay. RentSimpleSites.com. If you guys have not checked it out, it's a free training. I do got to give you a warning. Uh, you will probably like it. You may rewatch the videos and uh, you may end up joining Digital Landlords. So uh, be careful. Be Proceed with caution. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and hop in the waiting room. Hang tight. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? No, I'm just going to go for it. Let's go. Let's go. Here comes our guest. Heather Jones. Hey. What up? How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Hold on, let me turn my volume up here. 
Amazing. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you again. It's been quite some time since we chatted. Um, and that's going to be one of the questions I have. But uh, tell everyone where you are at in like physically right now. Where are you sitting right now? Uh, right now I'm hiding in my husband's shop down in the basement because it's the only place quiet. The kids aren't going to find me. <laughs> I love it. And I love it. Okay. And what state are you in? I know where you're at, but tell them. Uh, I'm in Canton, North Carolina. It's about 30-ish minutes from Asheville. I love it. So, I love it. Okay. Middle of nowhere. <laughs> you, you know what's so interesting about, uh, you know, and I love that you say Asheville instead of Asheville, like some of us freaking Utahns, okay? But what's interesting about that city is in 2020, maybe you've heard, maybe you haven't. When I originally, like, I was like, all right, you know, I got to figure this out. I got to figure out this pre-selling thing and the ads thing. My very first deal, we had a website in Asheville. It was for concrete and it was getting like one or two leads. And I was like, let's start throwing some ads at this thing and let's see if we can speed up this process. So funny enough, that was the, that, the if that guy hadn't bought, I don't know if it would have given me the excitement to go and figure this whole thing out. So shout out to North Carolina, shout out to Asheville slash Asheville. No, I'm just giving you a hard time. I, I'm <laughs> so um, let's just go. I got a bunch of questions, by the way. Have you met Porter? Yes. Okay. Amazing. Okay, guys, meet, uh, meet, uh, I want to say Ashley, meet Heather. Okay, Heather, uh, I want, I've got, I've got a, a series of questions here, but let's start off with telling everyone where you are at, just right out the gate, where you're at in your business, top line revenue, talk about like where you're at in terms of how much money you have coming in every single month. So I've been trying to kind of fly under the radar for a while because I wanted to hit that 10K before I really started talking because I'm one of those people I always doubt myself, underestimate myself. But right now, between uh, SEO and Legion, we're right at 7,200 a month. So good for you. Coming in close. <laughs> good for you. And and I will say, guys, I I had to I had to bribe slash beg because uh, I found out this is a, this is Ash. I could, she shouldn't have said Ashville. I'm going to say Ash the whole time. I I messed with Heather. I heard this rumor that she was like cranking and I'm like, I haven't even really seen her or heard from her since she joined the program. And I'm like, hold up, let me double check. So I checked with her. Sure enough, she's like ripping 7,000 plus. And I'm like, cool, let's do an interview immediately. <laughs> and she's like, well, I really want to hit 10 K. And this is what I said to her. And I, I stand by it. It's like, and this is why I want Porter on all these calls. I, people are, they relate so much more to where you're at, Heather, and where Porter's at, which is kind of in that same range than they do to me because you guys are just starting out relative to me. You guys are at that, you're, you're closer to zero than you are to a hundred. And it, it's it's more relatable than when you're doing 10. And I get it and I appreciate you jumping on. Um, but 7,200 bucks, I freaking love everything about that. Now, when, I can't even remember the exact time, but I think you've been working with me. It's been about a year. Uh, it's been, let's see, I joined the month before my son was born and he was born March of last year. And March then I actually got to get started. So, so 16, 17 months. Okay. So year, year and a half. Okay. So let's dive into this. Um, tell everyone if you don't mind, and you can also as things that you want to bring up, let's do it. Um, one thing actually, let's going to start here. This, I'm going to go off script. Uh, you mentioned that you are somebody that doubts yourself a lot, right? I love a that you admitted that because everyone can relate. Everybody can relate. Like I think the amount of people that don't doubt themselves are so few, but like for some reason we pretend that we don't have that. So I know every person watching this right now at some level can can relate with having that doubt. Uh, can you talk about that? And then also how you were able to have the the confidence to jump in to this business model and then get to $7,200 with all that you have going on? Well, um, it's a little bit of a long story, but I'll sum it up. Um, uh, out here, there's not really jobs that pay well. My husband and I actually got on at a local paper mill that made national news for getting shut down a couple months ago. Um, I had to go out after a C-section went bad, couldn't lift anymore. So I couldn't handle the job. Um, really left with nothing because nobody will hire you here if you can't lift 35 pounds, not even Walmart. <laughs> so I got really angry, really 
I hit a lot of depression there for a little bit because it's like I finally got the family I wanted and now I lose the job that I fought tooth and nail to get. Um, so I came home and while I was stuck on bed rest, I started tinkering, ar- tinkering around. Uh, I tried some e-com stuff. No luck. I tried affiliate marketing. That was a waste of time. And just kind of jumped from thing to thing, not really feeling any of it. And then um, went, uh, found out I was pregnant with my son and had a ton of complications there. And then the month before he was born, I actually stumbled across your group and I joined and I was like, you know, it's another thing to mark off the list if it doesn't work. Yeah. And I got in, I started seeing everybody in there and I'm like, how are they doing this? And so um, I actually reached out to several people and I was asking questions and that's when you uh, messaged me and you're like, hey, hey, you're asking the right questions. You need an other group. And I'm like, okay. And then uh, I remember you scheduled me. But um, let me say this as far as let me say one quick thing. Number one, you're talking about this group, right? The free group. Yes. Okay. And I do remember that because uh, it's very, very rare that I'll ever like even notice that, uh, that I'm like, Hey, that person's saying all the right things. And, you know, sometimes some people on our team will mention it and they'll, they'll reach out, but I just specifically keep kept remembering your posts and granted the group maybe was a little bit smaller or whatever. And I do remember that. I remember I reached out and I was just like, Hey, I, I don't ever do this. And guys, God is my witness. You could go through my message. You could talk to anyone. I got like five people that have access to my Facebook and my messenger. I don't do that. I don't really have time to do that, but something is like, just reach out. And we chatted. And I remember like we had to, we had to really get creative, but we made it work. So anyway, continue with your story. I just wanted to make note. I do remember that very, very vividly. And uh, thank goodness that I did. But uh, I remember you asked me if I wanted to join the digital landlords group. And um, I think it was a different name at the time, but I was like, yeah flat fee um I was like you know it's worth a shot I mean I've got nothing else I can do literally there's nowhere else hiring everything's shutting down uh especially in the middle of COVID and uh I went and I talked to my husband and my mom and they were they were both like you're just gonna get scammed and I'm like (laughs) well you know I don't have any other option right now so I'm gonna take the risk yeah and uh I remember I talked to you I got in and I binge watched everything in like three days and then I started kind of formulating my plan. And then I went and had my son. He was another C-section. And um, then it was about six months with all our health issues before I could really dive in. And then started cranking and just pushed through everything going on. Um, in short, um, our house got flooded. We had to move uh, with two small kids and then got moved back into the house, then found out the paper mill was closing moved three states away for a job on day one my husband walks in and they tell him oh we don't need you now we hired too many people so we had to move back to North Carolina and uh it's been a mess so we just got settled back in up here about three months ago and just grinding and piecing a team together and trying to catch you (laughs) I love that so Man, so I actually didn't even know all those details. So that I would have got had you on even earlier than this. I didn't realize. And for anyone out there, again, guys, we're I I wanted Heather to come on because I knew that she had very little time. I mean, any of you that have kids, uh, yeah, <laughs> one kid <laughs> is a lot. Okay, two kids, and I, I know that women are built differently, but like. I know, what was it? Two weeks ago, my wife went out of town for 36 hours, maybe 48 hours. And I I mean, I, you guys have seen the Incredibles when, uh, you know, the dad's just so tired that he has to just zonk for like two days. Dude, that was like a reality. So I don't know how you get anything done, but you got the kids. Not only did you have the, the kids that you're watching full time. And I mean that like, that's what you do. You you also had another C-section with health complications that lasted six months. I didn't know any of this other stuff. And so, and then it sounds like you went, moved for a job and then that was job. So then when you came back, then your husband's now still looking for a job. Like It's just a lot, right? But you did it. Yeah. There have you been a few what's breakdowns. Crazy? What's crazy is I, Heather, I remember I was talking to you and right when your husband was like losing his job, I was on a call with you 
and we were like, you were like, it's it's do or die. Like you're literally like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And you had like a few like a like you had a few like small deals, but they were like hundred dollar deals, right? Like they were small. That is crazy. <laughs> and then under the freaking radar, just is it seven thousand dollars? <laughs> that is so awesome that you did that. So mm -hmm. congratulations, that's so, sweet. So most people in your shoes, I hear this all the time. I get I, you know people will say drop a post maybe in digital landlords, and they'll be like, hey. You know, I've been in this group and now it's time to get serious or I've been in this group and now I lost my job and now I've got to make this work. I see this stuff from time to time and I'm like, yeah, I love that you are kind of like drawing a line in the sand. But most people, they just go and like dump a bucket of water on that line and then they're just like, you don't hear from them, right? It's like, there's really no line in the sand. They're back doing whatever. So I guess what I'm curious about is you drew a line in the sand because you're like, I have to make this work. I can't, I like actually can't lift 35 pounds. The job that I thought I had, like I can't go back to backs up against the wall. Uh, why did it work for you? Why did you make it work when everybody else seems like they they're in just as bad of a situation. And I mean that like, they're just as, uh, just as backed against the wall and then never hear from them again. And they somehow end up back in a nine to five and in the same position they were in. So like, what, what was it? Was it something that cracked inside of your spirit that you're like, I cannot live like this any longer? Was it having the second kid? Was it just, I mean, what was it? For me, it was a mix of things. Um, my husband and I had a really big, just mental breakdown. Um, two small kids. Um, I have lots of health issues. My mom, um, right before we got married, got run over by a forklift, like the ones that pick up the tanks to retread them. And so it left her with lasting, yeah, it left her with all kinds of lasting issues. So she has hundreds of seizures a day now and can't help me with the kids. And my dad's health's going down really far, really fast. And then my husband's parents are like 20 years older than mine. And we just kind of realized um, we can't manage to take care of ourselves in the boat we're in. And we've got everybody else counting on us too. And I don't want my kids growing up some of the ways we did. And I don't want Christmas to be, can we afford that? I don't want them going to bed at night, some nights hungry. Um, I don't want to get much into it because it's his story to tell. But my husband spent a lot of his childhood uh, homeless. Um, yeah. So we just kind of agreed that we were going to push through as hard as we could and make it work. So we cashed out retirement and went all in on this. Well, that's, that's inspiring. That's, I didn't, yeah, again, I, I'm sure that the story is, is much bigger than this. I think more than anything, and I think you could have told a fraction of that and it still would have driven home my point, which is like, there's no excuse to not make this work. And, and I, I made a video today. In fact, it just went out live on YouTube and you guys go check it out. In fact, Porter, go over to YouTube and copy it and paste it in the, in the feed for everybody. But I made a video talking about how much does it cost to actually start a business? And I was, you know, I talked about like, obviously these are the hard costs. I would, I would, if I were you, I'd go buy time and get somebody and get into a program, whatever. But at the beginning of the video, and you guys, I don't want to ruin the videos. You guys got to go watch it. I was like, how much does it cost? Well, not enough. Right. And I say that because a lot of people, they just dabble, right? They're like, well, I watch one live. Maybe you watch one live like this. You're like, okay, he's in the, maybe you watch the free training and you're like, oh, I put up a one pager, I run ads and then it doesn't work. And they're like, oh, next, I'm going to go to the next thing. But I argue that if this were the only option, if it was either you do a nine to five or you have this business model. Just the two options, okay? There's no e-com, there's no drop shipping, there's no Etsy store, there's no becoming an author, there's no small business, just this option. You would see so many more people make money because they wouldn't have any other option and they would focus on this one thing. And so my whole point with this call today is like, guys, I'm tired of trying to drag people into this model when the reality is the model is it hits every single box. And if, and like, I'm to the point now I'm going to start pushing people away from the model because I th think weirdly enough, that's going to attract the right people. But, um, and I said in the, in the title of this video, like guys, if you are somebody who's just going to do this and try it, then I think you should get off the stream right now, exit from the group and go do everything else. And then you should reconsider. I don't want you in here. 
I really, really don't. I want people like Heather who she joined and she's like, I have to do this. My parents or my mom said it's a scam and that kind of sucks. That kind of hurts, but I'm still doing it and I got to make it work. And she had six months of health issues, had a baby, had a C-section, had you know, her mom's accident. And she's still at 7,200 bucks a month and has every reason to be at zero or negative, but she's freaking doing it. These are the kind of people that I want. And I don't care where you're from, what language you speak, man, woman, I don't care what your nationality is. I want people that are hungry and people that have no other options or that tell, like put themselves in a position to have no other options. So Heather, I'm giving you some props because <laughs> you slept, we, we, we slept on you a little because you weren't talking. And little did we know you were out there in the wilderness, just building your freaking business. <laughs> And uh, you you emerged. I know you wanted to wait a little bit before you emerged, but the secret's out. You did it. How do you do this with, uh, w- well, let's go back really quick. The doubt thing. Okay. And Porter, by the way, chime in. I'm going to hog the questions and tell you chime in. So chime in. How did you handle the doubt thing? Guy, anyone out there, guy, gal, they're sitting there. Maybe they've they've failed another uh, a business model, right? They're doubting themselves, right? I did that. I failed a software company. And I'll tell you what. For somebody that's so damn confident, it took every bit of confidence right from me. You did that. Maybe you haven't been somebody that's always been successful. Maybe you've had, you know, whatever. Maybe it was the way you were raised and you were abused. Whatever. There's all these different things. You don't have, you have doubt in yourself. How did you, like, how how do you, what advice do you have for people? Because I know everyone can relate to that. Um. Well, my doubts... I'll back up a little bit. So after I had um, my daughter, um, a lot of women go into like postpartum depression and stuff. And I went a different route. I went into extreme postpartum anxiety. So things that normally I wouldn't have an issue with um, sent me into crazy panic attacks. Like (laughs) I know I was talking to you the last couple of days about freaking out over this. And that mixed with one of my other health issues just makes me randomly pass out. Um, so I was like, I'm going to get on this live stream and I'm going to, you know, hit the deck. <laughs> it's going to make some good content. Could you pass out so we can cl- like clip it at least? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, um, it, it was definitely, um, it's been a learning curve the last three years. Um, but as far as getting over it, just doing it. Um, the first phone call I made prospecting, it took me two days to build up to. And it was a voicemail. And then I stewed over it for a whole, like, I stewed over it all night and I woke up angry the next morning. And then I made like a hundred calls that day. Every one of them was a no, but I made a hundred calls that day. And I was like really proud of myself. And then I realized it was a Friday and I was like, I'm going to do this again tomorrow. And I was like, can we do this on a Friday, uh, on a Saturday? I think I'm asked you about that. And you're like, yeah, Saturday is a good day. And so I went all in the next day and then, uh, I finally got the first deal and I'm like, now what do I do? It was just a small deal. It was like 250 bucks a month, but, um, started building it out. And, um, I still have that guy on with me right now. Uh, he's upped a little bit, but, um, then just started going after the next and the next and the next and piecing together a little bit of a team. Um, I've been using a lot of Filipino moms since we're all kind of in the same boat and, it's kind of become more of a family. So that helps a lot, just getting up every day and staying motivated. Um, but as far as like time frame, I work is never consistent. I, I will say that. Um, most mornings, the kids wake me up about 530. <laughs> so I do most of my stuff late at night. Um, I'll be on most of the time till like two or 3 AM, um, get back up with them. And, uh, now my husband's home. He's watching them during the day, but they're still running in and out. Mom, mom, mom. So calls get a little interesting. And I think it was, it was the Saturday before my birthday. So it was like the 20th, 21st, somewhere in there. We woke up and the house was quiet. And uh, my daughter had gotten a hold of a bunch of paint that we were going to paint pumpkins with. And she, the whole nursery was covered. I had to postpone a closing call. And the guy was like, if you don't want to do this, it's fine. Just tell me. I'm like, no, I really, I really want to hop on with you. And I sent him a picture of my daughter standing there covered in paint, the walls covered. And he was like, oh my gosh. He's like, yeah, take you an hour or two and we'll hop on. <laughs> and then 
it actually was like the perfect pullback. He's like, no, I really want to do this. You're like, okay, I'm going to blame this on my daughter every time. <laughs> yeah, awesome. That would be a good pullback. But it was just so funny because I got on with him and he was talking about being a dad, four kids. Uh, he owns a towing company. And uh, it was a small deal. I, we're getting like 400 bucks a month off of it, just organic um, and some stuff that we're building out for him. But if you had told me this time last year, I'd be out there actually making it work. I would have laughed at you because <laughs> I didn't believe I could do it. I was terrified of getting on the phone. I was terrified of the Zooms. And then like this week, my webcam went out for no known reason. So we're just been winging it, trying to make it work. I think that's the big thing is you have to be flexible. You can't expect it to follow a script every time. You just got to grab it and run. I agree. Porter, you got anything you want to add? I do want to ask, like, what what did you, you, you said, I didn't believe I could do it. What didn't you believe you could do? Was it just the the, the thought of doing the the cold calls, the Zooms? Like, did that part terrify you? Or was it the whole thing? What, what part? It was kind of all of it. Um, I had some SEO background. I worked in marketing, you know, a decade ago. But I was, you know, bottom man on the team, just kind of doing the grunt work. So I knew enough to be dangerous, but not enough to get anywhere. And then, of course, you know, in a decade, a lot changes. Right. Um, so I was really worried about that. Terrified of getting on the phone and calling people and asking for money. And then um, I wasn't sure I could actually get it going and maintain clients. Like, I, I doubted I was going to keep the lead flow there. And not going to lie, it's been a lot of up and down. but Definitely setting expectations is the big thing. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's a combination of everything. It sounds like with the doubt. Yeah. One so more. So I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, and then I, I have one. Then we'll get in some Q and A. So guys, if you have questions, Porter's going to ask a question. I'm going to ask a question. If you guys have questions for Heather uh, that you want to ask or comments related to what we're talking about, or if after hearing her story, you have an excuse you want to toss our way. <laughs> We are waiting patiently in the comments. So see it over there. Go ahead, Porter. So uh, as you were talking, I know a lot of people, including myself, like getting going, it was a little bit tricky because if you don't have um, the, the the cash flow to to feel like you have enough money to run ads or you feel like you have enough money to, to get into digital landlords, like how did you other, I know the urgency was there. You were like, yeah. I need this or, or what else, but like, well, you could have got a job. You could have done other things. Like, how did you get over that mental thing of like, I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm just going to pay for the ads. I'm just going to join the program. Like whatever it was, like, how did you get over that roadblock? Um, determination. Um, because right after I lost my job, after my daughter, um, I had to go into door dashing because it was making more than going and working at McDonald's for nine bucks an hour. And I was able to be home with the kids, just have somebody ride with me. So I was door dashing like 60 hours a week and bringing home like 800 bucks a month. And I was sick and tired of it. I'm like, there, there's no way I'm going to be able to give them a good life like this. It's like, like I'll be able to feed them and that's it. And, um, I wanted the cute clothes. I wanted to be able to take them and have fun. Um, Actually, a couple months ago, we got to go on our first family vacation and I worked from my laptop in the evenings and it was like, this is unbelievable. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm just still kind of shocked. Did you guys just go like do a little weekend or what? That's so, that's awesome, by the way. Congratulations. That's cool. Uh, no, we went out to Myrtle Beach. We stayed a week and um, one of the resorts that I never would have picked. <laughs> that's amazing, though. You guys went from freaking like not doing like going to Myrtle beach. Myrtle beach is a cool place. People want to go to Myrtle beach. That's a great vacation. Awesome. I loved it. And now it's kind of like, um, we were challenging each other the other night. I'm like, how far can we push it? And, uh, I was kind of joking that I'm gunning for Nick. I'm going to catch him. <laughs> so that's me. Nick, I'm coming. <laughs> I would love to see like, seriously, because all that does is it just, it, it, I, you know, sometimes when you are immature and whatever you're egotistical you're like you want to be dude it's such a it's such a bigger flex and such a uh a compliment when you know they say uh lead like true leaders create leaders right and 
uh, people that are not leaders, they create little minions. And I don't want minions. I want leaders. I want people that make way more money than me. I want I want as many people. I want to make, you guys, you've heard me say this before, Heather. I want to turn as many people as possible into millionaires with this model, with our digital landlords program. That's my my underlying goal. So, um, okay. We got some a couple of questions that have come in. I do want to ask one last question to you, Heather. What was your yeah, but? And what I mean by that is if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say yeah, but, that is... That what everybody does, I don't care who you are, it's everyone has a yeah, but, right? Oh, Porter's at 7,000 a month. Yeah, but Porter's Nick's brother and he's probably getting help, right? Yeah, um, you know, uh, uh, Eugene's at 50, these are true, by the way. Eugene's at 50,000 a month, but, you know, he he's, he's really intelligent and he had this background in this. What was your, when you saw my videos, when you saw the interviews we were doing at the time, when you saw the other people getting deals, what was the thing you're like, yeah, okay, it's working for them, but my situation is different because of so, so, so thing, such and such thing. What was that thing? I guess it was the, yeah, but I'm a mom kind of thing. Cause like, like I see everybody out doing this or like when I first started, the people I saw posting all the time were the people who, um, like we're in college and they were living, you know, doing this, no other distractions, no job, just eat, sleeping and breathing it. And um, I'm like, I don't even get four hours of sleep a day. So like, how am I going to squeeze this in? And then I was like, and I don't have the money. So it's just going to be taking money from pot A to rob pot B later on. And um, I guess it was just getting sick and tired of it. And I was like, you know, I don't want to live robbing you know, one bank account for the other for the rest of my life. I just want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. When the kids see something at the store, I want to just grab it off the shelf and buy it and not think, are, are we going to make our bills this month? I, I can relate to that. That's cool. Um, I think, I think, and that's what I, that's why I was so adamant about having you on Heather, because we have a lot of, I mean, this is a, this is a, it's like many industries, this is a male dominated industry. And so number one, I love seeing women that are crushing it and, and kind of like showing other women that anyone can do it, especially women. And the other thing is people that are parents, people that have, I would even, I would even say people that have responsibilities outside of just, you know, when you're a college kid, you wake up, you, you skip your first class, you hit two hours of the gym you go freaking eat something, eat some cereal, and then you go, you know, to a party and get free booze. Like, cool, right? Like, but those that have responsibility, I think there's a lot more people in this group that have responsibilities, whether it's family members, whether it's their parents, whether it's kids, whether it's a spouse, whatever, whatever. People with responsibility, um, that's that we're the ones doing it. I, and I, when I started, I, I had, you know, a kid, another one on the way. I had a full-time freaking commission sales job. I had two car payments. I had a house payment. I had, you know, certain lifestyle that I wanted to maintain. So I, anyway, I was just curious because everyone has one, but nobody wants to admit it. So I think that's very relatable. So any of you that are women out there or not, I would just say people that have responsibility, we all have the same thought like, yeah, it'd sure be nice to just have be single and be able to spend all day on this. But reality is, Heather, I've noticed that I don't remember if it's Pareto's law or what it is. Let me double check. I, I really want to get I really want to give the proper credit where it's due. I think it's Pareto's principle. <laughs> Pareto's principle. No, it's not that one. Anyway, I can't remember what it's called. It's the one basically what's, that says, by the way, my my uh, Porter, you messed with my computer. I got all, everything's in Spanish, bro. What the hell? Anyway, no, I'm, dude. I'm just kidding. So anyway, it basically states that like whatever time you, you have is what you're going to fill, right? And it's true because like when we get these exams in high school or college, for those of us that dropped out of college or didn't go to college or went to high school, whatever, it's like you have this project that's due and you don't do it right until literally the night before and you somehow bang it out in three hours because you have to. Right. And so what I'm getting at is I thought the same thing. I'm like, man, I can't imagine if I didn't have, you know, a couple kids and all this responsibility and I could just focus on business. And guess what? Uh, the times when I've been on my own, I don't get any more done because I just find ways to freaking be a little bit slower, 
or to, to, you know, uh, end up golfing more or being like spending more time at the gym. It's like, so those of you that are like, I, I just wish I had this, this single life. No, you, you, you're fine. You have the life you have. Now let's go figure out. And that's what I love about this business model, right? A lot of business models, they're like, yeah, you can build an amazing life around the business model. This business model, you can just have the life or build the life and the business model can fit around the life, right? It's like when you take a jar and you put your rocks in it, that's your life. And then the sand fills around. That's the business model, right? Versus the opposite. When you have the sand, you try to put the rocks on top, it doesn't fit. So that's what I love about this, guys, no matter what. Heather's lifestyle, she's got kids, she's got responsibilities that's different from mine. She's trying to take care of her mom, she's trying to take care of her in-laws, you know, and, and Porter's is going to be different as well. But no matter what it is, this model can fit around any, whether you want to travel, whether you want to, you know, spend all your time doing ministry, doesn't matter. You can fit this around anything. And that's what I love about it. So, I mean, Porter, Porter's doing something. I don't know anyone else is doing this. Porter is going to take over the family farm and he's doing this at the same time. That I've never heard that Porter's doing it. Okay. So whatever you choose, that's what you can do. Porter, anything else before I go into a couple of quick Q and a. No, just respect to Heather. I just think that's awesome. So congratulations. And then I'm excited to see where you're going to go. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I do want to add one thing. Please. Like Nick said, um, the only thing that really kept me from chicken and out today was I know there's another mom, another dad out there that's in the same boat. And I sat down originally trying to form my life around like sitting down, doing the due diligence, going through and setting up everything and making everything else fill in the extra time. But now I do it, you know, I'll be, there. my husband gets mad at me because I'll be, you know, strategizing while I'm in the shower and t taking voice notes. And he's like, what are you doing? Or I'll be doing dishes and taking voice notes or listening to the lives on review after I've gotten the kids to bed and, you just got to make it work, fill it in while you do other things, get creative. And I actually found that my mind stays more focused that way. Well, we appreciate you jumping on. I do know it's not just your time that's very valuable, but also I know this isn't the first thing on your uh, priority list or things of fun things to do in my free time that I don't have is jumping on in front of 30 to 40 people and sharing your story. <laughs> so I, I seriously appreciate that. Um, and I do know that somebody's going to watch this. It's going to matter and, and it's going to be worth it. Um, the other thing is like, if you guys aren't taking your phone into the shower, freaking listening to YouTube and making voice notes, what you doing? I don't know about you guys, but like, I, I've been to the point now I'll take a couple of sodas and a phone into the shower, dude, these things, they're making them so waterproof. Now it's an experience. Porter. <laughs> it's the one place nobody screams mom. <laughs> it's so true. Hey, you got to be a mom to realize that. So, okay. A couple of quick things. Um, somebody asked, uh, okay, real quick though. Martin, Martin Berta, Bertag, I'm not going to try it. Berta, Bertagnoli. Gosh, that's tough. That's a tough one. I bet if I heard it once, I'd master it though. He said, they'll call him Martin B. Okay. M B. Said my first two masonry sites ranked number one within one month, but leads stopped on first and no leads on second. I know it's seasonal, but hard to keep excited when I thought my due diligence was good, but it turned out to, as expected. So, I mean, that's the thing, dude. That's a great point you bring up, Martin. And a lot of people are going to read that and go, oh my gosh, guys, uh, Martin, I am not a hundred percent sure. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not really hundred percent sure, but a lot of times, we, we don't realize that like you have to have a very, very sound due diligence and that I did the same thing, man. I, I had a website that I ranked number one in a very competitive uh, niche, ranked number one. I was, I was pumped and it ranked quickly and like, it was so spotty with the leads. And I was like, dude, what in the world is going on? And dude, I ended up actually just canceling the domain because I couldn't get leads. And so it comes back to like, you know, the due diligence is so fundamental and so, it's so fundamentally important. It's it, it, the, I always say this, you make your money in finding the niche in city, not in how good you do SEO, because if you can find the right city and niche, have enough volume, don't have a lot of competition. You're going to rank a lot quicker, even without doing a bunch of SEO. But it sounds like in your case, it, it, it was a due diligence issue. And I will tell you this, Martin, 
I feel like I have a bulletproof due diligence process. And there are still times that it's not perfect. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. Why did that not work? I thought everything looked good. And then you, the next time that you see something that looks eerily similar to that, you're like, hey, you know, this is, this looks good, but like, there's just something feels off. It reminds me of that one. And it's, it's kind of like that, that comes with experience and time and losing $1.45 million on ads and 200 websites in the wrong cities and niches. And so anyway, that's part of business, but uh, it sounds like just a due diligence issue. Okay. Anything else really quick, by the way, Porter did drop the video. If you guys want to check that out, uh, that I was talking about the YouTube video, um, E says, if anyone's new to the group who wants to start making money, but doesn't know where to start, dude, I love how uh, helpful people are. And like, just with Heather coming on, I didn't pay Heather to come on this call. She wants to help other people because she's been in the same shoes and she, I'm sure she's like me, right? When I was coming up, when I was trying to make my first million, when I was trying to just make this business model work, I remember going, dude, I just wish there was somebody who was making like 50 grand or a hundred grand that I could look at and go, okay, guy, you're making the money, not selling a course. You're making that money from doing this. And like, I have all these questions. And so when I started this YouTube channel, when I started this group, I was like, I want to be that guy that I wish that I had had. And Heather, I'm sure it's the same for you. And E's doing the same thing. So guys, uh, take these people up on it. And definitely we thank them for doing this. Uh, Emily, here's, here's another mom. Thanks for sharing your story, Heather. I'm rooting for you. Definitely inspirational hearing about your success. Thanks, Emily, for saying that. Chris says, Porter, can you add some deer jerky to the store, bro? Porter, get on it, dude. Seriously. Okay. Brock says, I relate two kids currently working a 12 hour shift. I needed to hear the story. There you go, Heather. It's exactly what we were looking for. Heather Jones from uh canton slash asheville north carolina thank you so much for being on thank, tell your husband and your little kids thanks for letting us steal their mom and uh let's go when when are you gonna get to, what when are you gonna be at 10k that's what i want you to publicly state uh definitively i don't know we're aiming by my daughter's birthday which is january 20th I love that, that way i'm being a little conservative in case we lose somebody over the holidays in case you lose somebody over the holidays. Oh, you mean a client? I was like, whoa, we're going kind of morbid here. Okay. Last question. I just had this thought. What's that like thing you guys are chasing right now? Like, I know it was a cool, like awesome thing for you guys to go on that. And that's so cool to like, you guys use this to go on your first vacation, which is inspiring. What's the next thing? Is it another vacation? Is it a car? Is it putting a down payment on a house? What's that next big thing that you guys are trying to chase? Well, right now, um, going back and forth, um, like my house is like dead middle of the county. And then my parents are on one side, his parents are on the other. And um, we're just getting run ragged back and forth, taking care of everybody. We actually found a huge piece of property. And this is a little like, ambitious. It's like two and a half million dollars, but it's like 240 something acres that we're aiming to save up for. And we want to put a couple of houses on it. So everybody's really close, but spaced out private property, nobody on top of us and let the kids have plenty of room to run around, play, nobody nagging us. Like I've got one neighbor right now that if the kids get a little rowdy, gets to screaming and we just want to be able to be on our own, if that makes sense. Oh, it totally does. Yeah. I mean, Porter's out there freaking on, living on the farm with, you know, how many acres surrounding him. And I totally get that. And I don't think that's, you, you shouldn't be ashamed. That's not, that's not, I mean, it's ambitious, but that's the thing that I've said many, many times. One of the biggest regrets I had is when I set my goal for a hundred K, I didn't actually know I would hit it. And if I had, I, I sit there and go, what if I had set that for 150 or 200 or two? So I love that you're setting it big like that. So um, Heather, thanks again. And there's one more comment I have to address. Uh, Dylan says, I have a call with Kyle tomorrow. I'm scared of cowboys and tall people. Any recommendations? Here's my recommendations, Dylan. Right when you get on the call, ask Kyle about black mambas. Okay. He'll know what you're talking about and he will, he'll curse me for it. So, uh, go ahead and ask him about black mambas. Okay. Heather, thank you. Everyone else. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week, 4 30 PM MST. Uh, right here live and we will see you guys soon. I'm out. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Heather.